In this video we're going to talk about percent applications that involve increases or decreases. We're going to be using our PBR circle which has our portion, our base, and our rate. And remember that this line here is our dividing line and this line here is our multiplying line. Now a couple of tips that go along with increases and decreases involve basically wordage. So anytime you see the term goes up or increases or maybe a raise, that's going to involve you to add that percentage to 100%. So it's going to be 100% plus the increase. And we'll just say that it's blank for right now. We'll give you your new percentage or your new rate that you're going to end up using. Now if you hear the terms goes down or decreases um, or drops, you're going to do the opposite. So you're going to take the 100% 100 100 that you would have had and you're going to subtract that percentage that it gives you to get your new rate. And let's, so let's take a look at this in action. The number of visitors at Shedd Aquarium in Chicago for December was 33,940. January's total was an increase of 10%. What was the total number of visitors in January? Now if we draw our PBR circle, we have again a portion on top, base on the bottom left, and rate in the bottom right. Now if we look at our information, we're given a couple of things. We're given 33,940 and we're giving an increase of 10%. Well, 33,940 represents the base. So we're going to plug that in here, 33,940. And then we have a rate of 10%, but this is an increase of 10%. Now, one way you could figure this question out is you could find 10% of 33,940 and then add it to 33,940. But instead, what we're going to do is we're going to look at this as, let's take 100% of our December total, which is the 33,940, and we're going to add the increase of 10%. We don't know how much that is, but altogether that's going to equal 110%. So this is the rate that we're going to use. Remember, we're going to use it as a decimal, so it's going to look like 1.1 instead of 110 all I did was move my decimal point over two places. Now, because these are in my base and rate, I'm going to end up multiplying those two numbers together. So when I do this, it's going to be 33,940 times 1.1. And when I do that, I get the answer of 37,334 people. Now, if we didn't do the 110%, but we did it the other way, we'd find 10% of 33,940, and then we'd have to add it to the 33,940. 33, the only problem that creates is sometimes mistakes happen with the addition. This saves us kind of any tricky addition because all we're doing is adding percentages. Okay, here's another example. The number of applications to Muskegon Community College declined this year to 560. This is a drop of 20%. How many applications were submitted last year? Well, if we take a look at our PBR circle, we can fill in a couple pieces of information. The number of applications declined this year to 560. So when it says decline this year to this amount, that represents the portion. So our portion is going to be 560. Now this is a drop of 20%. Remember when we heard the term drop of 20%, that tells us that we're going to be subtracting from 100. So we're actually going to do 100 minus 20% to get 80%. Meaning that this 560 here actually represents only 80% of what we had last year. Now I'm going to take that 80% as a decimal, 0 0.8. And because these two numbers are split by the dividing Bar, I'm going to divide them. So 560 divided by 
and my answer comes out to be 700. So we'd say 700 applications. Okay, another question it says, my insurance deductible is expected to increase by 9% next year. If it is currently $1,150, how much can I expect to pay next year? So I will draw my PBR circle with my portion base rate. And it says that it's currently $1,150. Now that would put that as my base because that's what I'm currently paying. That's my original amount. But there's going to be an increase of 9%. Now, if I think about this, that means that next year I'm going to be paying the $1,150, which would be my 100% of what I'm currently paying, plus 9 more percent. So in total, next year my, my total um, deductible is going to be 109% of what it is today. So I'm going to turn that 109% into a decimal, right? move my decimal point over two places, drop the percent sign, and I end up with 1.09. What I'm going to do with that now is multiply, because there's separated by that multiplying sign, to get my missing portion. So 1,150 times 1.09, and that comes $1,253 and 50 cents. For this last question we have a slightly different problem. It says MCC's enrollment for fall term was 6,042 students. Winter term's enrollment was 5,311 students. What was the percent of decrease to the nearest whole percent? So if I make my PBR circle we have to be careful about what we're plugging in here. We don't have a rate. We're obviously looking for a rate because it asks us what is the percent of decrease. So we need to know this. Now, looking at those numbers, it says that we started with 6,042 in fall term, and winter's term, we went down to 5,311. If we look at those two numbers, the actual amount that we started with, our original amount, would be fall term's number, 6,042. Now we need to figure out the portion that represents the percent of decrease. So what we want to know is how much did it go down? So what we need to figure out is what is 6,042 minus 5,311? So 731. So we have a, a portion or a percent decrease in actual amount of um, students is 731 students is the decrease from fall to winter. We're going to divide that by our base because it's a split by the dividing bar. Okay, so 731 divided by 6042. And we get a pretty long decimal 0 0.120986, blah, 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 stuff we don't need because we're rounding to the nearest whole percent. Now before we round, we need to turn this decimal into a percent. So I'm going to take my decimal point, move it over two places. That looks like 12.0986, on and on and on. And then from here, I need to round off to the nearest whole percent. So the nearest whole percent would put me at, in the ones place. The number that comes after is a zero, which means that's going to stay the same, or I'm going to round down to 12%. So I have a 12% decrease from one um, term to the next.